All right, so I know it's a little bit late in the game, but this is the iPhone 14 Pro, and I was actually lent this by a family member to unbox. So I've actually never uh, unboxed a, one of the uh, smaller sized Pro iPhones ever since the iPhone XS, because uh, not even the XS, the iPhone 10, because I had the XS Max, I had the 11 Pro, uh, Pro Max, the 12 Pro Max, the 13 Pro Max, and now the 14 Pro Max as well. So this is the first time I'm going to be taking a look on camera at one of the smaller Pro devices, and I honestly am curious if I will actually end up liking this more than I like my um, Pro Max. The main reason I go for my I went for my Pro Max was because I absolutely love the battery life. Um, so let's see how this stacks up. So this is the gold finish, and the box is pretty much same as Apple. They have removed the black boxes for the Pro now. It does come in the white box, but you still have the um, color matched iPhone um, and Apple logos on the on the box. And you've got two plastic pull tabs that you can just pull to open up the phone. Let's go ahead and open this up and let's see phone. All right, lifting off the box, lifts off very easily. And boom, here's that iPhone 14 Pro in gold. I have to say that that gold is very subdued like it's you can barely tell so at the angle i'm at it looks more silver than gold so yeah look at it this angle so this is kind of the angle i'm seeing it looks way more silver than gold uh you've definitely got to have it at the light right in the right light to see that gold the frame however is noticeably gold so that there's no mistaking this for gold that looks very very clearly gold so it looks very interesting Ooh, i just noticed this so the uh, charger, uh, the charge symbol is actually in gold too. So I'm going to guess. Oh, yeah. Oh, the button. Uh, so there are the, the display sticker here has um, the volume down, volume up, the alert slider, and the power button is just to show you exactly where those buttons are and what they do. And they're actually all matched to gold. I didn't notice that because this is the second iPhone I'm unboxing, the second Pro iPhone I'm unboxing. I just thought they all came in black, but that actually might have been deep purple now, now that I think about it. Otherwise, in the box, you get... Uh, this little cute little message that says you no longer need a sim card because apple said why not you know let's make everybody's life difficult and move to an eSIM before carriers adopt it because let's just do that but you know on, on one hand it is good you know that will force adoption but it's just very annoying to be in that transition period there's one apple sticker and that's it very very minimal uh stuff in the box and you've of course got that USB-C to lightning nothing else in the box to talk about so let's go ahead and put this box aside and let's take a look at the phone itself so in hand it feels really nice it is heavy though for a phone of this size it feels unusually heavy I will say though that the weight is definitely balanced well it doesn't feel like it's top heavy or bottom heavy the weight is definitely nice and balanced so let me go ahead and open up let me do the peel on the screen and I'm going to go ahead and move my mic closer to it so you guys can enjoy that peel as well. All right, there we go, peel done. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna go ahead, set this phone up, use it for a bit, and then come back and give you guys my initial impression on how I feel this phone is shaping up, especially compared to the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max that I also have. All right, guys, I've been using the iPhone 14 Pro for the last couple of hours, and I have some thoughts and observations. So my initial impressions are pretty positive, so let me get right into it. The phone. So let's talk about how it feels in the hand. This phone is extremely heavy. It really does feel very dense, and it, it is heavy. Like the, I know the 14 Pro Max is even heavier, but just because it's a larger phone, it does feel like the uh, weight is more spread out. It just feels a little bit more manageable, whereas this feels way more dense and just, I don't know, there is some there's a real heft to it compared to the 14 where it definitely feels a lot lighter, especially when you're just like moving around or it's in your hand. I noticed while using it, it just feels so much more comfortable to hold the 14 than the 14 Pro. So that's an interesting observation I made. And let's go ahead and let me start off and talk about this display, which is one of the uh, first things you'll notice. So the dynamic island is a new feature on the uh, Apple, the new uh, iPhones, the 14 Pros, and they, it does look pretty cool. So, you know, you can get things like timers. So if you start a timer, you'll see the timer pop up in that dynamic island. It's, it's more useful than it was before than just having a notch that was pretty much, you know, not usable 
by most. But with that, I still have to say that Dynamic Island can improve a lot more. There's still a lot of room for improvement, and I still think that it doesn't do as much as it should. Then let me tell you one more thing about this. The Dynamic Island definitely feels a lot better on the 14 Pro than it does the Pro Max. The Pro Max just feels like there's a lot of wasted space on both sides, you know. This definitely does optimize it way better. I do think that the iPhone 13 does a really good job with the notch. You know, the notch, the top section, the time and all the information here is equally laid out. It doesn't look like there's wasted space, nor does it look like, you know, it's cramped with space either. So cr I'm sorry, cramped with information either. So that's, it's a nice balance. And the 13, the 14 Pro does a similar thing with that dynamic island where it is spaced out, but it does look good. Another really amazing thing about this display is its brightness. It gets extremely bright. So it has 2000 nits of pre brightness, which is just absolutely insane. I was, I'm telling you guys, like I was outdoors with this and it was, you can, I had polarized sunglasses on with, in, in direct sunlight and they're black sunglasses. So it is very easy to miss or, you know, start to feel like the display is pretty dim on these, but oh my goodness, they, it looks like it was absolutely, I, it was like, almost like I wasn't wearing sunglasses at all. It was that bright. The, and it, it makes sense, right? Because this has 2,000 nits of peak brightness compared to the 1,200 nits that this has. And this is on HDR. Um, HDR content, um, whereas the typical brightness on the 14 is 800 versus the 1,000 nits on the Pro anyway. So the Pro just is, as a display, it gets way better. So if you're outdoors a lot and using your phone in direct sunlight, this, is, this feature is invaluable to have. And finally, before I move on from the display, I do want to talk about this whole dynamic island thing. I am still not a fan of it because what it does is it does feel like a cluster of dead pixels. I'll show you guys uh, when you play a video and you have the content playing, it definitely feels like, you know, you've got a cluster of dead pixels. And I talked about this in my iPhone 14 Pro Max video also, where I just don't like this cluster of dead pixels because when you look at it on the iPhone 14, I'll tell you, yes, it is a cluster, it, you know, it, it is similar where there is that notch that does take up the space. What you do have here comparatively is a more um, uniform almost, I want to say, yeah, uniform is probably the word. Uh, let me just show you guys. You know, it, it looks a little bit more clean. It doesn't look like a cluster of dead pixels. It just looks like the screen is cut out in that way compared to this. And, you know, you guys might be saying, oh, I'm just complaining and nitpicking. This isn't something that I'm noticing now. I've used Android phones for years that have had cutouts from all the way from the Galaxy S10. And I'm still not comfortable with this. I don't like it. It does feel like a cluster of dead pixels. So um, I... Even though I do think that it is better that the notch has kind of gotten smaller, I do wish that the implementation was a little bit different compared to this whole dynamic pill thing that has uh, clusters of dead pixels. So let's go ahead and let me move on and talk about the cameras where a significant amount of the differences between the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro come out. And the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro, actually, if you guys just look at the camera module sizes, they're so different. The 14 Pro uh, is just absolutely massive. And to give you guys an idea, here's the case for the iPhone 14. So this is my umber leather case for it. Here's what it looks like when I try to put it onto the iPhone 14 Pro. It just literally covers up, like the entire case, there's so much more camera for it to be um, covered. So like if I line it up with the bottom edge, you guys will be able to see how far it protrudes. So this camera module is absolutely massive. And the cameras are clearly... A, a defining factor of this. So what you do get is a 48 megapixel main sensor now. So that is the biggest camera sensor that Apple has ever put into a iPhone. And you also have an improved 12 megapixel ultra wide and telephoto. So the iPhone 14 does have an improved telephoto and ultra wide as well, but this year all the cameras are different. So another thing with the camera is that it does have that telephoto lens now. So the telephoto lens does let you uh, take 3x photos and as you'll notice there's also a 2x mode which is actually just the 48 the main camera uh, more cropped in to give you that zoom effect it actually works really well and the quality is really nice so I'm glad to have that 2x back so I've always felt like the 3x was a little bit too punched in whereas the 2x was a little bit more of that perfect middle ground sometimes of wanting a little bit more zoom so I am very happy with the um, camera setup on the iPhone 14 Pro however I will say this I would probably ask, you know, if, if somebody is really using their camera a lot. If you're taking a lot of photos and videos, then the iPhone 14 Pro is definitely worth it. But if you're just a casual 
picture taker and take a couple of photos here and there, then the 14 Pro will still take amazing photos. I'm sorry, the iPhone 14 will still take amazing photos and do a really good job. So you really don't have to necessarily jump up to it. It's not like these cameras are bad. It's just these are definitely a step above and there's just a lot more, you know, new sensors and features that come to play here. And also you do get ProRes and ProRAW support. So if you're looking to shoot in RAW, there is that option, but honestly, I have I've I've had Pro Ra, Pro Raw on my iPhone for two years almost now. Oh, sorry, more than a year now, and I haven't really used it that much. So that must so that's like something I would say is not the biggest deal in the world. Let's talk about the verdict. What do I think about these phones? So let me go ahead and talk about just this lineup. So the iPhone 14 Pro is literally the Pro Max and the iPhone 14 getting together and having a baby. You've got the size and dimensions of the iPhone 14, but you've got the design and the uh, features as well as the cameras from the iPhone 14 Pro. They are really, um, the 14 Pro I think is really the sweet spot in this year's lineup. The uh, At $999, it comes in at $170 more than the 14 and just $70 more than the iPhone 14 Plus that's about to come out next week. So it really does make a significant um, case for itself because it does have not only those improved cameras, but it has the um, always on display. It has the dynamic island. It has the 120 hertz refresh rate and it also has that 2000 nits of peak brightness outdoors, which is actually very usable and something that I do appreciate. So if you're looking at buying an iPhone 14, I would actually highly implore you look at the iPhone 14 Pro. For $170, I do think that you actually get a lot more for your money. And that $170 price jump is actually justified because you do get features worth that. Um, now, I'm not saying that the iPhone 14 is a bad phone and you shouldn't buy it. It's a great phone, but I just think that instead of buying an iPhone 14, you could buy an iPhone 13, which is very similar. And then when you compare the 13 to the 14 Pro, then there's a way more, there's a $207 price delta and then things become harder to justify. But at $170, if you are spending this kind of money on an iPhone, I would say maybe it might be worth looking at this one because it is a better package all around from the cameras to the display to the battery performance everything is definitely going to be better on the 14 pro so i do definitely recommend this phone it is awesome if you're looking to buy an iphone 14 pro i definitely can recommend this without an issue i will say there are still a few software bugs here and there and battery is still a little bit of a you know toss up between how it works but Overall, I am very happy with this phone and I can very, very easily recommend it. So if you guys want to check these phones out, I'll have them all linked down in the description below, including all the accessories and the uh, equipment I use to film these videos. And if you want to check out some more behind the scenes of these phones and just photos of all of them, they'll be all over on my social media. I'll have the handles right here on the screen and of course, linked down in the description below. Go check them out over there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next one.